Hey everybody, John from Bike Advisor. A question that comes up a lot has to do with saddle position. And saddle stuff is one of the things that comes up the most, actually. Specifically, the tilt of the saddle. Uh, I get a lot of questions on whether it's okay if the saddle nose is down, or if it nose is up, or if it has to be in a certain position. And it's it generally follows a rule that generally level is probably the best scenario because it allows for the pelvis to actually have a stable base to rest on um, while keeping the, the saddle out of the way of the pelvis as it tips forward. Um, however, it's not a, a hard and fast rule. We There are some situations and some circumstances that might allow you to put a saddle that doesn't necessarily look level, but it actually will be level or act level. So we're gonna get into that here. So first, the type of saddle might make it a little bit tricky to figure out how it's supposed to be positioned. Take for instance this Sela SMP. All these compound, these double curves here, it throws a lot of people off. Um, I've seen many people set these so that they look kind of like that, where this is kind of running downhill and then up a little bit and then downhill significantly. And actually, the way this saddle should be set is so that this high point and this high point are actually level with each other, more like that and um, you sort of rest cradled in the middle. So that's one example. Another one, another example is something similar to these ISMs. So this ISM saddle, you can kind of see there, it has a flat section here in the front and then it just barely kicks up, just a couple of degrees. And the way this should be set, I, I, I do see a lot of people um, set this incorrectly, is this forward portion should be level. And so as long as that is is level just like that then this you know this back portion is going to kick up just a little bit and that usually provides the best stable position here and another example is this physique that you see here similar idea it does it's it's kind of a combination of these two it has a bit of a, a double curve to it however the tail is supposed to kick up just a little bit and uh and then the, the you set the the front half of the saddle relatively flat now next, we have to consider how the saddle is gonna move once we apply our body weight to it. This will depend on, one, how big of a rider we are, but also how the, sh how the saddle is constructed. How, how much rigidity is there in the shell? Does it give quite a bit with just a bit of pressure applied to it? Um, and also how rigid or how stable are the rails of the saddle? Because they essentially act like little springs, and if they if they are um, quite mobile, it might allow the saddle to move one direction or the other, nose up or nose down, temp, uh, potentially. So we re and even though this is a difficult thing to consider, because you, obviously when you sit on the saddle, you can't you can't see it, you can't necessarily see exactly what it's doing. However, just by pressing on pushing and pulling on the saddle, you can get some idea for how how stable it is or how it's going to move. And quite simply, if you through some good reasoning, set a saddle mostly level or, or you know, in some position, and yet when you sit on it, you still feel unstable, like you're you know, being dumped off the front. Um, maybe, it's, maybe as you sit on it, it's kind of nosing down slightly. Or perhaps when you sit on it, you get more pressure from the nose of the saddle, like it's pressing up into you, and so it might actually be nosing up on you just a little bit. So you can also just account for what, what sensations is it giving you as you're riding it. And now the last thing to consider is in this same vein um, as far as how it moves when we weight it because we, want, we need to consider where the saddle is clamped on the rails because again these rails act like a spring. If the saddle is right in the middle it's, of the rails it's more likely to move in an even fashion, even pattern. However, if we have the saddle slid all the way back, that means this clamp is on the front of the rails. It may preferentially compress the back side of the saddle down and kind of effectively nose up and vice versa. If the saddle is slid all the way forward, that means it's clamped all the way back here on the rails and it might actually preferentially nose down. So we may need to account for that. And yes, we have all these kind of new rules now for the type of saddle and whether how mobile it is, etc. However, if your saddle looks like this, then it's usually indicative of something else wrong with your bike fit. The most common thing being the reach of the bike being off. Maybe it's too long or too low and you're trying to compensate by more aggressively tilting the pelvis uh, 
past the point where it's stable, essentially. So it's important if you are struggling with this, or if you do have your saddle position similar to that, you might need to look elsewhere in the bike fit for one, but return back to the saddle tilt, and now you have some more information to uh, hopefully get it set into a position that's gonna provide for a stable base for the hips to rest on. So that's all for this video. Thank you everybody for hanging in there and watching, and I will see you on the next one.